Hey guys, in this podcast, we sit down with Peter Lim from Maiden News Network. We talk about his channel, his origin story, and of course, we talk a lot about Bandmade. That's what his main channel is all about. But not only that, this past year, he started interviewing a lot of other Japanese bands over there. So we talk a little bit about that and how he goes about interviewing these bands, how he's met some of them. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome <laughs> to the Guys You Guys podcast, where we're interviewing someone today. Instead of is that what this is? Yeah, this is a podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm here. Then I even got the right shirt on. I know. I keep failing it. I I still don't have a GG shirt. Peter, where's your GG wow. shirt? <laughs> oh, sorry. These are my jammies. <laughs> hey, you're color coordinated for the podcast, though. I mean, that's that still counts. There you go. There you that go. Works. You have an that awesome works. background. Thanks, hey, man. man. Congratulations on the one year happy anniversary. I know I'm a little, I'm like three weeks late on this. Well, we, I guess we showed up and said thank you on your um, show, but um, <laughs> congratulations, man. I really love your content. We, we love watching it too. It helps us at, at GG, like, you know, keep up to date. <laughs> mm. Yeah, we got to start charging you guys. I know you, you really do. You you probably should. If you had a subscription service, you'd make some money off of us for sure. <laughs> Every time I'm like, all right, we're talking about bandmate today. Like we're like, well, we're gonna do the Yokohama Arena show, right? We're talking about I'm like, oh, let me see what Peter had to say about it. <laughs> let me see. Well, what you, you know what? I'm honored. I'm honored. It, it is really cool to have somebody at the shows putting out stuff where it's accessible for everybody you know i yeah. mean there's a lot of people that are there but you're doing you're making an effort to to put out you know something specific people can watch and get an idea of like what it's like before a show after show it's really cool man right yeah i you know i discovered this um you know earlier in the year doing doing mnn and initially the idea of doing these interviews and stuff and then I'm not really kind of the game guy, like the act activity guy, like, you know, back in the States, I, uh, like SU is really good at that, like putting the games together and like challenging and like song challenges mm -hmm. for me. I just like talking to people like, so where are you from? What are you up to? Like, who do you like? So I decided to just go in that direction and yeah, I, I just, I enjoy interacting with people, but to be honest, um, so I'm happy to go out there. I'm happy to share things that people wouldn't be able to get or be exposed to if it weren't for me. Like, not like I'm happy to be exclusive. I'm just happy to just share what I can. Yeah. But, you know, I there's definitely times, and you guys know since you guys are YouTubers, is sometimes you're just tired and you don't want to yeah. talk to anyone. And <laughs> yep. you just want to be at a show and just enjoy the show. But you're like, okay all right hey what's going on yeah you have to like count down in your head and then just okay get out there it's your social battery that's what i call it the social battery oh, yeah. like wears down after a little bit you got to recharge it um i know champ is really good at recharging all the time he may do a little excessive recharging but he's pretty good <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't get the return as much as other people on his charge <laughs> Yeah, it turned a little extra. It there. needs to be replaced. <laughs> yeah, 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 it needs yeah. a new battery, probably. I think. <laughs> yeah, it seems like it needs recharging all the time. It's quite. <laughs> it's quite getting worn down. <laughs> well, I you just go to Nick NiCad instead of fucking Duracell. It's not working out. <laughs> sounds like my I sounds like my iPhone 10 battery right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and like you said about the shows, and that's why we appreciate you. That's why we have you on today, like to show the appreciation we have for you and what you do and what SJ mm. does for Made News Deck Work, because we really love what you guys do. That's why we like to support everything you guys are doing over there. And now you're expanding mm. to interviews and stuff, and I know that takes a lot of work, setting that up, meeting with bands. You're doing translations for Ryan on some interviews here and there, you know, yeah. help me out also, and we can't thank you enough because, you know, we don't have – a way to like talk to some of these bands where in the way that you do and we we appreciate it you know and yeah. it's just crazy and you know let's start back like way way back how how did all of this start for you like your your origin story what is a uh, peter's oh. origin story here 
Uh, so we had just come out of the theater and I was walking with my parents on a dark alleyway and uh, this guy with a gun popped out. Wait, this sounds familiar. <laughs> Are you my, my mom, hero? My mom had on this pearl necklace. And... <laughs> oh, God. Um, are you, are well, you I'm, who I I'm, think you are? <laughs> I'm flat man. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. Holy crap. <laughs> Ryan's been idolizing man. you forever. Man, how do you stay so young? <laughs> Way busier than I thought, dude. <laughs> Batman well, plus know, my, interviews. <laughs> my, my, my life gets, uh, <laughs> revamped every few years by a different artist. So mm. that's how, how I stay looking young. Oh, okay. But uh, I mean, how, how far back do you want me to go with this? I mean, your love of music, man. Like, what started all this? Like, what? Like, oh, you want me to go? Oh, yeah, back. yeah. Let's get to know Peter. Let's get to know the man oh, behind the scenes here. Okay. Oh, so this is you're, you're like doing the reverse Uno. This is what I did to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> did you? All right, I don't remember cool. that. <laughs> that's, <All right>. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. Okay, sure. Let's go there. I mean, you know, the the, the first thing that really pops out to mind um, in terms of the impact of music and like just being drawn to it is is MTV. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was there when it launched. Uh, I am that old. Um, Damn, I, I thought you were twenty two. You know, watching, listening to Video Killed the Radio Star. You know, seeing Duran Duran, Michael Jackson, Wait a minute. you Madonna, guys saying you were there when it launched? Cindy Lauper. I was there when it launched. Wait, That's how old, old are you, Peter? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, you don't know? No. Oh, I'm older than Ryan. What? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> no way. Wait. First off, I don't, Asians, how, dude. <laughs> I don't remember how old Ryan is, but how old are you, Peter? <laughs> Ryan is 79, 78, <laughs> 76. Come on. No, 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 no. You're the year, the year, oh, the year. 77. Oh, okay. 76. Oh, wow. That's it. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, you look good. I always thought you were just younger. Damn. I thought Peter was okay. So legit. You know. <laughs> Cause I act like a child. I know. Oh, wait, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. No, no, no it's, children now? um, Okay, well let's let's Sorry. let's stay on track. Stay on track. So, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Welcome MTV to MTV. Just grew up watching music videos. Just I mean, nonstop. It was just I loved it. Uh, I was captured by not only the music and the performances, but the artistry of the videos. Mm -hmm. Not that in my childhood mind I was like, wow, I really appreciate the use of holograms in this one. Wow, nice use of computer like animation in this one or whatever else. Like, oh, you know, pretty hot chicks. At least I wasn't like consciously doing that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. you know, like that that really just kind of stuck with me just my whole life. I mean, there was a period of time in my life where it was just finish school, come home, watch MTV four or five hours straight. Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. um so i just i just loved music and um you know that goes into me starting guitar in sixth grade with my cousin who had started playing electric he had this white charvel and he brought it over with his little fender preamp and he said hey peter do you want to take lessons with me and he didn't even know how to play because he had just started so he just like <laughs> noises. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. So I was like, yeah, sure. So, you know, went to Guitar Center, got my nice black Ibanez Roadstar 2 series, I think. Um, which yes. I mentioned in a previous interview that it got stolen. Oh um, yeah. But you know, that that was kind of the, the journey. I didn't realize that I had this thing for music and a knack for it, but you know, I did guitar and mm. then my sisters played piano. I initially thought, mm, I think piano, it feels like it's a girl's instrument. And I don't know why I thought that. Nobody <laughs> around me had made that impression or, or put that pressure on, like, oh, you're a guy. But for some reason in my head. But at some point I was like, oh, hey, to my sisters, like, can you teach me how to play piano? 
Um, but they um, got very frustrated with me or I got very, very frustrated with them. Mm-hmm. So then I was like, no, forget it. I don't want to learn from you. And I think I, I tried learning piano from all three of my sisters and I just said, no, forget it. So the things that I had learned from guitar and then in seventh grade, I was it seventh grade. Yeah. In seventh grade, I started playing the baritone saxophone. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> it's, it was this, it was this combination of this book that I had, this guitar book with chords also. It was um, the saxophone, learning that. And then it was just kind of intuitively sitting at the piano and going, oh, okay. And then just kind of improvising and playing around. So then picking up piano. And then at that time, I was going to church and, you know, like they had instruments there, the bass, the drums. And I just like went at it like with everything. So, yeah. Um, musically that's kind of like a lot of what i did for a while just playing whatever i could learning whatever i could Mm. nice so that's sort of musically you know where i came from and um do you still play any of those instruments do you still play any of those instruments to this day yeah well you know um (laughs) the only time i get to do it is when well not right now but when i was teaching at schools Mm -hmm. they'd always have like a a, you know grand piano out there somewhere so whenever i had break time i just go in there and start playing it kids would come in wow pita sensei sugoi kakui i'm like i know what's up (laughs) (laughs) i'd be doing that or if they had a drum set kids were learning i would kind of play a little bit of that um i haven't touched the bass in a while but i do miss that i've always had this sort of kinship with the bass because it's got the rhythm it's got the groove and i love using a pick even though like you know of course you know fingering is like the the right way but i love using the pick the way it feels because i'm at heart sort of a guitarist so playing the bass like it's a guitar like i'm like doing like rhythm Yeah. Uh, yeah and then you know throwing in like little lead little like riffs and little beats so any 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 preconceptions about playing a bass with the pick going out the window as soon as I discovered Misa? I'm like, yeah, fuck that. There's more. <laughs> there's more than just being able to play with your fingers. There's being able to hear how to how to play certain things that nobody like nobody else is doing. You know, so yeah, and care. it's there's it's it's the, it's the difference of you know even like plucking a violin versus actually using the bow. Like yeah. everything you use or don't use makes a difference in how things sound. So it's just. But for me, a lot of it was just feel. I love the way it felt. And I love the way that the downbeat that you can have all with the pick, you know? Yeah. It's one of those things I like to say is just tools in your arsenal. You know, you can play with pick and fingers. You can use both. There's nothing wrong with that. And like you said, it adds to the feel uh, with the pick. You know, you can feel that Uh, every recording I do with bass, I always end up making the bassist play with the pick anyways for recordings, which is funny because it just has a better tonal quality to it too yeah. so i actually agree with you the pick is just a way it's a way better feel and tone in my opinion it's also. way more way more consistent <clears throat> it's yeah. crisp it's yeah. got it's got a crisp quality yeah even uh what dave ellison from bank megadeth said that his producer always told him to use a pick like he's a great bassist but he's like i always use a pick because just the sound was better to record <laughs> mm. <laughs> we didn't <Yeah>. want to <laughs> yeah mm. we our first bassist and I at Dicotic, we taught him how to play with a pick for the recording. Because oh, at the really? time, yeah, at the time, I didn't really understand compression that well. And you have to use yeah. a lot of compression when people are using their fingers to get that consistent, like, leveled out sound. Mm. And, kind of yeah. like tighten it, right? <laughs> yeah, to tighten it. Yep. You see, I didn't know that. And I just thought I was just, I'm never going to be a good bass player because I could never <laughs> record. I tried to record bass. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I can't hear this. This is too loud. Is it just me? I can't figure out pressure. Yeah. Turns out they use more effects than most guitar players. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they'll use like double compression and stuff. Yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what's fascinating. Like, is there anything of Misa like playing the bass like with pedals, or does do they show the pedals she uses? I mean, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of magazines out there. There's a lot of photos of like her pedal board over the years. She's posted like her pedal board, like on her Instagram. You can go and check now and see. I guess I never thought about it. I like because every time I see them, because you know, every all those pedal boards are controlled by MIDI now, so they don't even have to step on them and they like kind of auto 
they auto change tones as they're playing. So I never really think about it. Um, I know. But yeah. It's just nice having your pedals though. I think you, yeah. it, you're, you feel cooler because they're like, yeah, these are my pedals. I think yeah. Bandmate still has their, they still got everything set up, but they can, they can be triggered off stage if they need to, if they're if away they from it to. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Eric and I were talking about during the concert reaction, but we'll get into that in a second. I was going to ask okay. you, um, the bit, like so did you ever have were like wanted to play in a band or like ever inspired to be in a yeah. band like knowing all the instruments yeah 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 i did um you know a lot of uh my musical background was like me playing at church with the guys because like that's where all the instruments were so it was like every weekend i was playing with them and um you know, my, my guitar teacher, he only taught me, I think, for about eight months. Mm. Um, and then I just went by the book and then just, you know, learned, like, the pentatonic scale, uh, like, the major scale. and just started playing. Mm -hmm. um, but because of his influence, like, he was more, like, blues and funk. And so I loved, like, blues. And so we there was this teacher there. And we would just jam, like, a lot. Like after things were done, just the instruments are out there, just just start playing, and I loved it. Um, you know, and I was like singing and I was playing, and it was whether I was like just doing the chords and singing, or it was me just jamming, or like because we just switch around on instruments all the time. So I loved it, and oh, so cool. It it was uh, what probably towards the end of high school where I was like, "Hey, mom, I know what I want to do. I want to mm. be a musician." Yeah, and she's like, "Peter." Peter, that's a hobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and at that age, I and at that time in my life, I just thought, okay, well, I guess it is. So yeah. I just left it there. Um yeah, so it's unfortunate because I think had I actually pursued music at that time and really, you know, gone to school and done other stuff. Who knows? But you know, whatever. You you, you can't go back. Can't live in regret. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But just yeah, of course I want to play in bands. And I was playing with like, you know, people all the time, um, just throughout, like even in at university. And you know, uh, again, this is I was a pretty <laughs> consistent churchgoer. Um, I don't attend anymore. Like a lot of things happen, but I don't want to go into any of that. Yeah. But with that um and during that phase like i was writing a lot of songs i was um performing a lot of my songs and i did try putting bands together it never quite worked out mm -hmm. uh i have the issue where i'm like ah not 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 quite my not quite my speed not quite my speed you know it's just like whiplash it's like yeah not quite, not quite. Like, ah, that's not quite the bass I want. Uh, that's not quite the drum that I want. Ah, uh, just, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. And I yeah. I was just so damn picky. I didn't know how to just like let people play and let their personality just kind of come out and just be okay with that. Ah, uh, okay. I didn't, I didn't like the change of what I had heard in my head. It's like, yeah, it's just something about the way that what I had heard in my head and then how it came out, I didn't like. So I just always ended up just like recording my own stuff, doing my own thing, even though I was limited because I'm not the best drummer. Um, bass, I'm not bad. I, I can do whatever I want with on bass with what I wanted. Uh, piano, I wasn't bad. Guitar, I was I was okay. Um, yeah. So it never quite panned out. Even though I wanted a band, even though I wanted to do these things, I legitimately like wanted to go out and tour the world i wanted to write music that would touch people's hearts and connect with them uh -huh. like i had this thing where i was like i want to write music that people will listen and go oh, dude that guy gets me yeah. totally that's the kind of music that i wanted to write that that's fascinating that that was what kind of stopped you initially was pretty much your own head got in the way of yeah continuing to going on do you think you would ever do it now maybe like now that time's passed to kind of reflect on it you think you would ever consider doing a band thing again i always like to tell people it's never too late but how do you feel about that yeah no i mean i i agree it's never too late 
um it especially i feel like in the world of japan in this culture in this society and just seeing like how many bands are out there and you know because because people are a lot more open and accepting age wise uh than i think america is because america is all about the youth the youth the youth really um like that's the primary thing um who knows you know i'll get close to these bands and then i'll go with them to a to a rehearsal i'll jam with them and like hey peter you want to play sure why yeah. not you yeah. know like ryan's gonna go up there and play with hades at some point yeah so... I, mean, I like promised him I would. <laughs> oh, we'll <God>. see <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah your fans fun. would love it i think i think the fans of <laughs> mnn would all eat it up if they saw peter go play some music that that's a cool thing you know um about doing what we're doing is like you are creating like a following and people that appreciate everything you're doing so i'm sure if you did anything music they would definitely show you some love and check that out uh, yeah, I don't know. he's put some stuff up he's done uh yeah. solo versions of some, yeah. some band-made songs at least solo acoustic stuff ah there you go yeah done covers i've done yeah. some electric like little little solos with uh songs just little ones i don't too big I saw that doubt in your head already. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> you got to yeah. shoo that away, Peter. You got to buy. I mean, no, <laughs> don't get me wrong. I think I can do these things. <clears throat> yeah. But will actually would it, would it actually catch and become popular? I don't mm. know. I mean, mm. and it's like the time that it would take to invest in creating music. True. It just, it takes time. Yeah. You know, like it's just getting older I think what people don't realize about musicians and sometimes the, I think the mistake that people make, people are like, oh man, musicians can be lazy. It's like, it's not musicians being lazy. They need time to create like in their own head, you yeah. know, they need that artistic sort of like, sort of breathing that breath, just like think of yeah. things like let the lyrics come out, let the chords, the melodies, like let it develop. Because when yeah. you're busy and you have no time, it just nothing comes out. You're just spitting out like, you know. Yeah. If you try and yeah, force it, bullets. if you try and force it, people know. <laughs> Being the whole sophomore effort thing with, with records. The first one's great because they spent 20 years writing it or 10 years or whatever. Then the second one, they have like two years. Yeah. And they're trying to fill an album as opposed to all the stuff they've, they've been carrying around with them, you know, trying to trying to get it out there. Part of what you said yeah. about time, and I think Wave has mentioned this on our channel, is mm. you got to figure out how to be bored, you know? And I think that's the trick to it. Like, because like you said, you're using up all your time to do all these other things because, you know, we have to pay mm. for our living, pay for expenses and stuff like that. We never have a moment to just sit there and think. And something that I've learned over time is like, don't have anything playing. Don't play any videos. Just you got to sit there. You got to let the mind right. wander to the point. And fortunately, that'll sometimes, in my case, uh, all of a sudden I'll be like, oh, I'm ready to play. Like I've been wanting to play guitar like crazy. Um, I think being bored is like a really key factor <laughs> to like actually playing because I noticed I'd be running with my head cut off pretty much, you know, when I was in a district manager position. And now with YouTube doing the, as much as we all do, you kind of forget about that. You're like, oh, I'm not writing stuff because I'm so – I'm preoccupying my mind with so many things. So yeah. taking that moment to yeah. be bored is, I think is really essential. I think wave was right on point with that. Yeah, I agree. You need time. Yeah. Your brain, your heart, your passion, you know, your yeah. emotions, it all needs time to like formulate. Yeah. All right. Um, so, so you, you got into music as that. And then now, um, did you, you didn't always live in Japan, right? so yeah so i was in the states um up until 2010 mm -hmm. and then i moved to korea uh, i was there for seven and a half years oh wow when did you start stumbling upon um different uh, different music outside of what you were listening to when you were younger um i mean i guess it <laughs> You know, for, for a period of time, um, somebody had shown me a Bollywood movie. 
-hmm. And I fell in love with it. I was like, wow, it's like a musical. It's dramatic. It's epic. There's like these fun dance numbers. It's so different. It was really interesting. And then I started just like watching all these different Bollywood movies and like even like ordering like DVDs of them and watching it at home. Oh, wow. So wow. at at one point, I probably had like 40 DVDs of like Bollywood movies. Wow. And I was listening to it. I was listening to it all the time. I was like, hey, check this out. Check this out. Like in my car. <laughs> Everybody's just like, uh... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What was I, it about I, it that got your attention? Uh, it's just, um, I just found it fascinating. It was just really different, different sounds, different tones. Like just the, it, it was just a really interesting production that I had never encountered before. Mm. So it was just really, it was fun. You know, like when you find something fun, like something yeah. new, it's just fun. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I guess, I don't know if that was like the first time, but that was definitely like a moment that I had. And then when I started learning Korean, I was encouraged to watch Korean dramas and I was like, Korean dramas are for women who want to cry all the time. And I don't, <laughs> I'm not down with that. I've seen my mom just cry her eyes out and like, that's okay. It's not my thing. But, you know, I was encouraged to, to, you know, get better at like, you know, the language. So I started watching it. It's like, okay, it's not as bad as I thought. You know, the girls are pretty cute. Um, <laughs> the music's not bad. And I've always had a soft spot for musicals too. I've always enjoyed the idea of a story and having music tied into that. Mm -hmm. So I actually wrote a Christmas musical, you know, when I was attending church. So I did, I wrote like four or five songs, like Christmas numbers, uh, put it together and had like the, the, all the kids like join in and like do the acting. So I was directing, doing all this stuff. Wow, man. Oh, wow. It was really fun. And I was like, this is not bad. This is pretty good. <laughs> this is pretty good. Um, But the whole, like, so going back to like uh, the cream music and the dramas, and then I was like, okay, okay, it's not bad. And I got into K-pop and Initially, I was like, oh, gosh, it was a bit cringy for me. I was like, ah, because, you know, it's not a band. It's not like guitar. It's not drums. Yeah. It's like just yeah. cute girls dancing and like doing <laughs> choreography and whatever else. Yeah. But but they were just so damn cute. <laughs> and <laughs> and I, you know, was thinking about moving to Korea. So I almost I kind of put myself on a forced diet of K-pop. I was like, let's mm. try to, let's try to get to a point where I can appreciate, where I can enjoy it, try to see what, what can be good or what is good. Mm -hmm. So then I started doing that. And then I had this period of just like K-pop, um, or at least, at least a good solid year or two, um, while I was in Korea a little bit before, just like nonstop K-pop. What was your favorite artist at the time? Uh... Some old school K-pop people will know this, but there was like Big Bang, 21, Girls' Generation, Kara, Tiara, 4 Minutes, I wow. mean, yeah, after school, a bunch of stuff that people who know it, know it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, and that's why, um, but you know, it, it did nothing to encourage me to want to play music. Uh -huh. Nothing about K-pop made me go, God, I really want to pick up that synthesizer <laughs> and like that. Oh, you know. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, and that's why when I came to Japan and I discovered Bandmade, I mean, it was just like, oh, my God, like, that's right. <laughs> like, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it was, it's weird. Yeah. So you, you went... get lost sometimes. Yeah. So you went from that K-pop phase and after that phase is when you started, you came to Japan and this is where things start to shift. Did you discover a band made right out the gate or was it other bands first? Well, I had the K-pop phase and then it's hard to recall specifically, but 
actually towards the end while i was in korea because i was there until 2017 mm -hmm. um yeah i had discovered baby metal uh through the late show when they did give me chocolate oh, okay yeah. i was like i was like what is this <laughs> <laughs> so they're checking out some other stuff uh, I was like, oh, shoot, Karate, that's a good song, you know? Like, yeah. Karate was, like, my jam for the longest time. It's a badass song, yeah. Uh, oh, loved it, loved it. Um, and then I actually, while I was in Korea, you know, I, I was illegally downloading a lot of music. <laughs> there were, like, <laughs> there were sites where I was, like, there's, like, all these new Korean, Korean music or, or Japanese music, and I was just, like, trying to look out. Like the mm -hmm. one that stood out was uh, was was Scandal. You know, I listened to Scandal as well. I was like, oh, this is pretty okay. good stuff. This is pretty good. Um, but I never like full on committed and like jumped like headfirst into like the waters. Um, I was like, oh, this is pretty good. And then it's kind of I just looked at that. It was me coming to Japan. It was me like finding bandmate through youtube while searching for you know like other stuff and i it's hard to say and this is what's the funniest thing is of the almost universal like story of people just saying i don't know what it was about bandmate i don't i i've never felt this way about a band mm -hmm. it just yeah. i don't know just just song after song it just i don't get it <laughs> There's this like there's this lack of comprehension as to how bandmate sort of like basically just like consumed them, and I I I don't fully understand either, which I, I'm sure Ryan can understand. Yeah, man. Uh, the thing bandmate, I I mean a lot of people they've seen it, like how they took over my life, <laughs> like my music, you know, and, in real time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and. The crazy thing is, like, I, I start, you know, talking about what I like about it and what drew, drew me in. And then, so I go back and listen to music that I've been listening to for decades. I'm like, this is, this is so slow. Like, it's so boring. Stuff I've loved for years and years. Mm -hmm. But then I also find myself finding things in that music that I love about Bandmade that I just wasn't hearing before. So I don't know if it was... um like the music that I've been listening to forever, I discovered pretty much before internet was even a part of my life. So you, you go get the CD, you listen to it. And that's all you know about the artist. If you find a magazine article every other month, that's another, another way of finding information. Then MTV came along, but I mean, you can, you can get information there, but now where you find a band and then all of a sudden you can, you can go find tons of information. And so now you're tuned into the band as like an instead of just the music they create, like the band as a, as an entity. People. And yeah. yeah, you start to see their dedication and everything a little bit more. And so I think that it it got me to focus even more on the music and what I liked about it. And then I would go back and like, well, nobody does this or nobody did this before. And I go back and listen to stuff. I'm like, well, shit, they were changing stuff every verse too. Why why didn't I catch that then? You know. That is interesting. Part of it maybe just because of the YouTube, like doing it for YouTube, where I, I was breaking down songs yeah. like I never broke down before. You know what I mean? Like I was looking at these things with a microscope, and I didn't do that with other music. That's definitely I mean, one. Go ahead. One of the biggest, or two of the biggest things that grabbed me and just like blew me away about Bandmade. The first, the first thing that really was just like, oh man, this girl, like. The notes she plays these little things it was, it was misa like what misa did like when i listen to real existence when i listen to yolo when i listen to choose me it's just really simple little things i'm just like god it just it's so perfect like it's just like this little like packaged gift of like perfection i'm like yeah oh i need to hear this again yeah here's something hear you didn't know you again. needed yeah, and then the other thing that I really fell in love with about Bandmade was that that Bandmade change up in the second verse. Yeah. You know, that Bandmade change up. It was just adding that extra whatever it was. You know, changing up whether it was a Connie on the drums or Misa on the bass. 
I mean, it was just like the melody changing. I was like, oh man, I love this so much. And it's just um, what they were really good at. And I think they still have elements of that. But to me personally, they were better at it before because it was a bit simpler and it was easier to hear. Um, it was like just enough, just enough. Like they didn't, they never went into excess. Yeah. And so you're like, oh man, I need to hear it again. I need to hear it again. It's like um, the coda in uh, Secret My Lips. Like when uh, Miku is just going off and just doing her thing and it just goes off like into the air, like into the sky. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, this is, oh, so good. Do you think, so, uh, er- go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. I was going to say, do you think earlier albums, it, like those things you kind of grasp- grabbed onto them immediately and you wanted to hear it again and now kind of you have to listen to the song to hear those things because there's so much more going on? I think Bandmate has definitely gotten busier um with more recent stuff and because they are i think they're more intentional about trying to change things up but sometimes to me and you know i hope people don't get offended you know we are (laughs) mnn um but there are times where i feel like uh it it feels a little bit forced compared to previously Mm. and i don't know if that makes sense but yeah it's like earlier stuff, I think that idea of evolution was there, but you know, they only had done so much. So it's like anything they did that was a little bit beyond that was like, was evolution, but they had done so much, you know, so much with just bring it world domination and, and then conquer. Yeah. It's like, and then unseen world. It's like, where do we go from here? How can we evolve? What can we do? So you have to like be a little bit more deliberate and try different things and try to incorporate different elements. And because of that, um, you know, and uh, again, I I don't think it's, it's, it's bad, but it doesn't feel as as smooth to me. Mm. If that makes sense. I get, I get what you're saying. And it's, it's fascinating hearing um, this perspective because you guys are fans of like everything band made where me, I'm a huge fan of unseen world is my favorite mm. band made album. Hands down. If yeah. I want to be yeah. inspired to play guitar, I listen to that album like immediately. Mm. Even when I was watching this concert, um, I got that vibe. I'm like, I looked at Eric. I'm like, dude, I just want to play guitar right now. Konami's making me want to play guitar. Yeah. <laughs> like it's so yeah. inspiring to play. And something that I heard during the Yokohama concert, um, it's fascinating. You're playing like a lot of the older songs and groups, like in the beginning, and then they go to the newer mm-hmm. songs. And I, I remember looking at Eric. I'm like, holy fuck! Do you realize where they came from? Like into that right. section. I was like, you're right. It got extremely busier <laughs> than than yeah. I really realized. But I appreciate the nuances from those songs in World Domination and Conquer because that it does feel like more nat like natural of that feeling i get what you're saying but in the newer Mm -hmm. albums they're like they're trying to up their game you know um which maybe i wonder if they know maybe it's just them that wants to up the game personally like they're not really focused on um the fans in that sense you know they're like i want to be better Mm -hmm. i want to get better and better and better you know maybe it's a peer thing where like they're always trying to outdo do themselves with the newer stuff do you think this might be what it is well one of the things that i gained a lot lot of insight about with bandmate was um i was putting together a seven-year anniversary so this is three years ago i was putting a seven-year anniversary video together and i decided to go back into like everybody's twitter from like 2013 until then until and so I would be at the coffee shop and just like going through, like, I was like, <laughs> my eyes are going to just fall out of the socket. <laughs> but one of the coolest things, and I still have like screenshots saved of it, is Konami's early tweets. And I mean, it, there wasn't tons, but there were enough where you could see that even then she's like, I want to be a guitar hero. Like I went to this um, concert. I'm so inspired. I want to like be able to, you know, achieve this. Like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this. 
And this also goes back to one of the first interviews I saw with them, which is pretty popular called Gold Rush. Yeah. It was what it was the interview where they're like, oh, I'm the I'm the I'm the old Japanese guy that likes to eat salmon. Oh, my charm point is drinking. Right. Like that, that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um but she, in, in that one, Konami was saying, oh, she likes to read self-improvement books. Mm. Like she would like I remember she said that. And I was like, yeah, that's that is Konami's character and that's her thing. Um, sort of upgrading and evolving and getting better and trying to become as much as she can be. So when I went through and I saw those tweets and it kind of just meets, it just kind of clicked. I was like, yeah, that's her. So if anybody's the one that made band made what it is today musically, it's her. Mm -hmm. She's the one who pushed everyone else to become better. Like I think Misa would have been fine just listening to like classic rock, listening to yeah. her grunge. You know, like she would have been fine with her like Brit pop and stuff and just doing her thing and just, you know, enjoying it. I, I don't think she necessarily had the sense of like, I want to evolve and become like this amazing, like top tier musical band. I don't think Miku felt that way. You know, she's like, I'll just try to learn the guitar. <laughs> and play yeah, some, dude, it's play some, crazy. Play some chords. <laughs> yeah. So I, mean, I was like, yeah, I the way that she's improved too that's insane yeah but yeah so uh but yeah i mean just just with konami um as a band i think they you know and again konami being the one who became like the like the composer for bandmaid um and the fact that she had submitted like hundreds of songs or like no 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 dude no. to keep doing that and keep getting like rejected and just be like all right because when she when she writes and she does it when all her messages when she says i'll do my best that's like sincere dude like she's yeah. legit gonna do her best it's not just a sign off <laughs> like I, I have no doubt she is like i will do my best for you you know yeah and to to keep at it and man what 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 a to submit and then get rejected and then finally be like you know what? I will. I will do better, and I will prove to you I will do better, and you will, you will see it. <laughs> yeah, and it's, she's one of those people where it's not like you need external push for that. It's just this. It's this internal engine that just yeah. is constantly just like churning. Like it's just she's like this full on. She's this has got this sort of eternal flame of pursuit inside of her. <laughs> yeah. So I think she inspires and pushes everyone else. And they're like, yeah, let's up our game. Let's go for it. Definitely. So. Heck yeah. Uh, so, and then ever since then, you've just been listening to Bandmade. And you now are expanding on Made News Network with a bunch of other bands, as you guys can see here on the screen if you're watching. You've been uh, following oh, right. up with... Um, Asterism, uh, Hades. What you were the first person to like turn people on to Hades, like bringing bringing that content. I I guess so. It seems that way for yeah. for a lot of people. Um, I had enjoyed other stuff previously, you know, like it was like ninety nine point nine percent bandmade. I think the first four and a half years mm -hmm. but you know i had enjoyed listening to other bands and different stuff like one band i really liked that you know broke up was the winking owl mm. they kind of mm. had this sort of poppy paramore thing going which is really cool um i listened to bright deer uh i've always just liked um kimi's vocals i just really like there's just something about it i really like and i thought it was just a, uh she had, they had some good songs so I did listen to other stuff, but I am not the richest man. And so I made a point of it. I'll go watch bandmate shows. I will not watch anybody else. I will not buy any other merch. I will not invest or try to get into other bands mm -hmm. because I can't afford to. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of just, I was just like, yeah, it'll be bandmate. And um, that's what it was. So it was bandmate, like, really the majority when it came to Japanese music and listening to other stuff. And then like, you know, like 
old school like Van Halen, um, Maiden or whoever or the Beatles like who I love, just you know other bands. And then it really was this year that just did a number on me. Um, Peter of 2022 and Peter of 23 is like worlds apart in terms of just my mentality, what I want. Um, just, just a lot of different things. But it really was me going to uh, well, the very first show, this was, it was actually Tokyo Garden Theater because mm -hmm. Tokyo Garden Theater, that was me going to, you know, Tokyo from where I live here. And then before Tokyo Garden Theater, I ended up watching uh, a Bride Year show. And it was just like, oh, this is so cool. It's really unique, uh, the show that it was because it was a really small venue. It was like maybe 35 fans. There was pizza, there was sake. You know, there was a time for fans to actually go on stage with the other band members and play with them. Like, oh, oh who knows the song? Who wants to play drums? Who wants to play lead? Who wants to play rhythm? Who wants man. to like, who wants to sing? I was like, what the that's hell? That's freaking this? amazing. That is awesome. <laughs> was that, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It was, it was just nuts. I was like, this is very cool. Wow. Um, and then seeing Bright Year live was just really nice. Um, yeah, it just, they're just, I, the way that it came to me was they're like the coolest girls on campus. Like, like if you're, if you're at college, they're just like the coolest girls ever. And all you want to do is just hang out and be just in their proximity. That's how it <laughs> felt. Mm. Um, so yeah, that was a great experience. And then I ended up watching another show with three bands uh risky melody little lilith uh who just toured you know europe and came back and then this group called maze like an alt idol group but you know i saw them after the show like it was a, it was a fun show it was a great show a lot of energy you know just some great moments but afterwards you saw like all the members trying to sell their merch and like oh you know do you want a checky do you want yeah. you know how about this wristband and like oh here's a flyer we have a show coming up and I was like, yeah, that's the reality, isn't it? That's yeah. the reality. Like, we're not this, like, cool, untouchable band that is just set. And we're just, like, riding, you know, like, on the waves. It was just like, no, we're grinding it out every single time we do a show. Yep. Um, you know, in these small venues where it's, like, 100, 200, maybe 300. It's like... yeah. And something just kind of like, uh, you know, they, and then I was thinking how like, you know, these bands like in Japan, they're just, you know, doing their, their circuit of whatever, whatever, you know, like live houses they do. And they probably pretty much have only been doing that. And some of them like for, you know, over a decade, there's quite a few bands who actually celebrated their 10th anniversary this year besides Bandmade. Yeah, man. Um, um, but when I went over there and I saw, cause we see videos like asterism and they're like legendary to me, like these videos of, of when Avika was just super young and just shredding yeah. and it's like, this is amazing. And then I went to see him and they were part of a four man, a four man show and they right. were like third and there was like, you know, 125 people there and they were in the crowd before, like I'm standing there and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> right there checking out the other bands i was like oh shit they're you know they're just here to they're just playing man and then you know i i ran into him after the show and it was just they were grateful people were there to watch them and then you know same thing with Sai sega you know they got good videos they're it's music i was it was to me it was just brand new and it was like damn this is amazing then you go see it and you're like all right they're playing a small club still killing it but yeah, like right. you know, you said there's there's bands like what Toro no, Toro no Karami. They've still they're still playing playing their clubs. They're tearing it up, but they've been I think 13 years. Mm. Something was it, no. This I, is their tenth year. This is this their tenth year? year. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah, I don't know, man. And they're they're like thrilled, you know, lo still loving doing the shows and everything. 
yeah it's a, it's a grind. but you know like like in my head like when i was kind of thinking about this i was just like if these bands only ever just do tokyo or even just japan yeah um and word never gets out and they never kind of like break into sort of western markets and like western like fans the audience they're just on this like tokyo hamster wheel or this japan hamster wheel yeah it's like it's just round and round and round and round and i think some bands um you know over the past year as i've experienced and interacted and just kind of seen some bands do seem more okay with that than others mm -hmm. but yeah. there are bands who really want the exposure who want to get out there who who want people to like like notice their music become aware of it um so then you have bands who have management who are a little bit more protective and like oh um you know maybe 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 not and then others were just like like uh this one band the she Glapes. uh when i first met them i watched their show it was with i think three or four other bands and you know i forget if it was before or after i think it was after you know they performed but I went to their merch table and I said, oh, hi, um, do you mind doing like an, an, an interview? Like I'm I'm with this channel called MNN and, you know, our our viewers are primarily like overseas fans. And they were just like, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> and cool. then, you know, there are other bands where it's just like I would you know say the same thing. And they're like, um, uh, hold on a second. And they would talk and they would kind of like slowly agree to it huh. mm. so like i've had various i've had various responses so it made me realize okay some people really just want it just want to get as much out there as they can others mm. maybe are a little bit um protective or a little bit wary they're not mm. really sure what's going on um and others are like ah, we don't really need you <laughs> mm. uh, so it depends but like uh like going back to hades i mentioned this in my interview with them with ryan but or i i'm not sure if i did but hades really changed my life because they did agree to doing an interview with me and they were the first band i interviewed yeah i had no idea you know i'm just this this guy from america who just started a youtube channel who happened upon you know their new music video um decided to see what was going on went to a show that night where they happened to be playing close to me that day uh that was you you it, went and saw him like when you discovered him you went and saw him that night right yeah is that what it was yeah it's like it was march it was march 12th it was a sunday afternoon <laughs> i was i was sitting here and i was just going through i was like oh what is this and it's interesting because that music video reminds me a lot of Thrill, the black and white, and it was just so yeah, simple, it like the way it was just yeah. shot. And I was just watching, and I was like, "There's just something about it I really liked, and I loved, like Mayo on the drums, the way that she was playing. I was like, she just seems so like into it, and like, uh, something about it just felt like a throwback to like cool, sexy, a little bit loose and wild, not, not as." like clean and pretty or cute like it just felt a little bit more raw and i like that a lot like i i feel like i'm a punk at heart so mm -hmm. when things are too clean and too pristine i'm not i don't really like it so there are bands that people are like what you don't like them i'm like it i don't know it just sounds too too precise too clean too pretty it feels sucked um it, it it feels a little bit um sterile to me Mm -hmm. and that's just me because there are other people that just love it so that's fine and i don't want to throw out any bands because <laughs> i don't want to get shit for it so but yeah it was i and i was just i, I watched that video probably at least 10 times straight and then <laughs> twitter let's see what's going on i was like holy shit there's a show tonight i called i was like can i reserve a ticket yeah sweet i'll be there in a couple hours wow <laughs> washed up went there um yeah and then um i was like damn these girls are good and what is so funny is that at that show 
uh, at the rail. Um, gosh, let's see. So at the rail, I was on Kuya's side, but I really, at that time, I wanted to just see Mayo because I was just like, I wonder if she'll play the same way as she does in the video. Yeah. And I've really got into it apparently because after our interview together, Ryan, we had lunch together, we're just eating and talking. And I was like, oh, um, do you remember me at that show? And then Kuya was like, oh yeah it was like there's this new guy and like dude he's going nuts <laughs> what is what what what's his deal who is this guy <laughs> that's crazy they remembered that there was a new person so they had like a regular following before that kind of yeah that's how it is i mean every single band that has their like main group who like follows them and oh. um, they know them they know them like yeah so when they have like a small like you said what was it was it bread Ear had like a 35 person event or something they they mm -hmm. know who's going to be there kind of like they have an idea i think i think so yeah yeah that's that's kind of cool though that is kind of cool yeah that just to know your fans you know you got this core group huh. that's going to show up for you and they, they'll Here notice when someone's new, new. <laughs> yeah yeah to me, that's a um, wild concept. I can't imagine that in the U.S. Like, I'm like, what? What? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. I so that is really interesting thing is like because since I have seen certain bands multiple times, I'll see the exact same people. I'm like, okay, there's that guy. There's that guy. Oh, there's that mm. guy. I'm like, oh, there's that guy. <laughs> 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 there are just certain people you just don't quite vibe with. I've yeah. seen that with the uh, bandmate shows across the states. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> so you uh, you saw him that first time. Then you did you approach him like when you were talking to yeah, him after that, the show or whatever. Um, you know, one thing that I guess I forgot that I was pretty good at talking to people because in while I was living in Asia, I didn't really do that. I think while in Korea and then earlier on, you know, in Japan, I didn't like go out of my way to meet new people or talk to them. And I do have a very introverted shy side, which I think maybe a few people have seen. Um, because, you know, I'm kind of now sort of a personality uh, on the screen. But yeah, so I kind of became a hermit um, for the longest time. And I kind of got used to that. And then, but me wanting, it's it's weird. When I want something, something just kind of like flips, like a, a switch is flipped. I'm like, okay, I need to get that. Yeah. Whatever that is, I need to get that. Mm -hmm. Um so I knew I could do that. Like previously over the years, I was like, okay, I want to make this project for Bandmade. I want people to do this for me to give to them. So I'll, you know, throw it out there and I'll be very specific and I'll say, okay. And then because people being people, they're like, they don't follow up. So then I'll, I would personally, various times personally, like message like 30 people Hey, can you, can you take a photo? Hey, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? So like, I'm like, I need to get this many people to do this. It has to be this much for it to look decent. Mm. Um, so I kind of, I do kind of have this sort of very stubborn quality at times. And so that's kind of what's come out this year is that I want this interview and I'm going to talk to them and I'll see what I can do. And so going up, talking to initially it was mayo and i remember after their performance she came out she was like oh, oh just being all mayo the way she is <laughs> yeah. and i was just like i don't know why i was just like oh my gosh mayo i i i love you i i love you can i give you a hug she's like oh i'm very sweaty i'm like it's okay it's okay <laughs> so, like, i have no idea I just there was just something about about her that made me just feel like dude um, this chick is so cool. <laughs> She's yeah. so chill. So, um, 
So I did that. I gave her a hug and I asked her about doing the interview. I talked to Sara about doing the interview. Um, she's like, oh, you know, that sounds very good and interesting. And Sara is like, she's, she reminds me, at least in my, um, what I imagine that maybe Miku was like, like back in the day. But Sara is absolutely the the PR person. She is the one, she is the marketer. She is the one who goes out of her way to interact with people, to be very polite, to be very kind, to be very generous and like, oh, hey, hi, hey, here. Like, I mean, it's just, it's just nonstop, nonstop, like just doing everything that she can to like get the band out there. And so she's very polite about it. She's like, oh, okay, sure, sure. So we're just talking a little bit with her. And then I talked a little bit with Yuri too. I was just trying to just talk to the band and um, yeah, I think, how did it end that day? They were just like, oh, that sounds really good. Yeah, I, I don't see why not. Um, and I don't remember the details, but after the show, got back home, I ended up messaging Mayo, got no response for the first like couple of days. So then I messaged Sara about it. And then she got back to me because I because it I just felt like she would get respond more quickly. Yeah. Um, so she did, and then she's like, "Oh, you know, we're kind of busy right now." And at that time, I didn't think about doing it like live with them. Um, I just thought just doing an interview. So even Zoom would have been fine for me. But mm -hmm. then after a couple of weeks, because I really thought, "Oh, I guess nothing's going to happen." Uh, I, you know, I was like. All right. So after a couple of weeks, I just kind of gave up. She messaged back, said, we're going to be in Osaka in May. Can we do an interview before the show then? I was like, oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Totally. For sure. And I was so ecstatic. And the funniest thing is that early on when I was interacting with Sada, I would get like really nervous and giddy. Like I had a crush and mm. like my my crush was actually talking to me so when i would message back i was like <laughs> 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 um yeah so i mean i don't know that that's a lot of just jabbering on and on but um that was the start of it and doing that gave me a lot more confidence and gave me a little bit of like okay this is how we should go about it mm. Tried to do the same with Sai Sega um, a couple of times because yeah. I saw them in May and June. Um, and I think after I had gotten the approval and I had done the interview with Hades, maybe I got maybe I got too confident. I'm like, oh, I can do this. So <laughs> then, you know, I'm talking with like Toko, the drummer, and I was talking with uh, Katsuki, the bassist. And um, I think I was pushing pretty hard. <laughs> I yeah. think I was just like, yeah. But uh, they're like, oh, you know. So I saw them in May. And then I said, oh, do you think, you know, I'll see you again at your one-man show in, in June. So I was really trying to like, can we, can we? Like, and then yeah. messaging. And there's like no response after a while. I was like, okay, <laughs> I need to, I need to relax. I need to relax. Yeah. So in June, I saw them, didn't say anything. I was just like, oh, I loved your show. Thank you so much. Regan, thank you for flicking me off, giving me the finger. I loved it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, I uh, left it at that. And they're like, oh, Peter, we, re we remember you. I'm like, hey. But that was it. Yeah. And uh, it wasn't until just maybe a couple of months ago or a month ago, I got a message again from Toko and saying, Oh, Hey, you know, I think we may be, be able to do an interview with you in December, like in Osaka. I That's like, great, man. I was like, Oh, sweet. And then I just got confirmation. I messaged a couple of days ago and they're like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Before the show this time to this time, um, like at the venue. So Finally, after six months, uh, getting wow. an interview with Sega. <laughs> I I just I've been uh, 
after after I saw them um at Cyclone, mm. I started checking out the Twitter and Instagram and stuff and like and stuff and I got some responses from them and whatever. And then I mean really partly you're responsible with with doing your stuff, talking to bands and stuff. I'm like, well, fuck it. I'll, I might as well start reaching out to people, right? <laughs> so I ended up messaging them and uh it took it took probably a month to get a response and they're like well uh, yeah well you know I, I can send questions if there's not time i know it's hard to get time to like do a video or whatever mm-hmm. and they said okay so i sent questions over to them and then it's it's been it's been probably a good probably a good five months mm-hmm. of slowly going back and forth like i'd mm-hmm. like i would say you know just checking in and then i would just let it go like you did i just let it go maybe they don't want to and then out of nowhere hey uh we'll we'll make that video and we'll get it to you <laughs> like a oh, freaking cool man <laughs> so i don't know maybe it was both of us talking to other bands mm. and they're like oh these guys really you know they're actually talking to bands so i don't know so that's cool we're both gonna have stuff coming out probably around the same time september it'll be yeah. a good christmas present yeah i mean yeah. that was that was probably the first band that i really wanted to interview um yeah so yeah kind of getting it at the end of the year is a nice little bow to a pretty interesting year (laughs) yeah that's crazy it's just so wild how that's all like changed like within that past year like you going from just like strictly bandmade now you're doing a bunch of bands that are over there that's really cool it's um you know it 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 is overwhelming too um and the, the hardest thing is going to a show where there's multiple bands mm-hmm. and then you're just like, which bands, all of them, one of them, <laughs> yeah, just the one that I want to, like, how do I do yeah. this? So trying to like maneuver my way around, figure things out, but I don't want to name the name, the bands, um, but I went to a, a festival where there were at least six to eight bands. I forget how many exactly. And I thought, okay, there's at least a few bands here that I want to at some point interview. So I'll just ask. And it all came down to, oh, ask management, ask management, ask management. Mm -hmm. Um, I was like, oh, okay. And then it was just, well, do I want to ask management? Do I want to interview with you that badly right now? I was like, no. And then it was like, and then asking management and then not getting a response. I was like, okay, that's fine. I'll just let it go. So at some point I may ask again, you know, and then I reached out to Asterism a couple of times through a muse, but no response. So I'm seeing them, seeing them again, like next weekend. But at this point I'm like, uh, it's fine. I mean, people know asterism, the people who would watch probably. So yeah, maybe sometime later. Um, I reached out to bright ears management. I was like, oh, I'd love to interview them too, but no response. So yeah, it's just, there's so many different, like, you know, it, cause it's really, what's really funny is that um, the first interviews i did was hades and then after that was hala you know lead singer of hades and it was just like yeah okay i was like okay so in my brain i was like oh it's that easy do you want to yes (laughs) all right interview and i didn't realize how lucky i was that i had actually interviewed the two of them first because it was such an easy thing to do um and I think had I encountered obstacles like at the very beginning, um, I may have been more reluctant to reach out and like talk to people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a lot so, of loopholes uh, for interviews. Uh, some interviews, there's a lot of loopholes you got to go through. And management never responds right away. It takes quite a bit of emails. Yeah. So very fortunate with them. And they're both under blacklisted records. And Onishi-san, um, who you know is is the head of the label such a chill cool guy like i just promote their stuff but whatever decisions they want to make they're free to do it you know like let them do what they want 
Mm. I was like, sweet, sweet. So even like uh, interviewing the she glapes, it was so easy. It's like, do you want it? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and then we did it, you know? Yeah. So. But yeah, um, but yeah, like you saying, going from just bandmate to this year, it is, it's it's like it's such a full on like 180. Um and it's interesting because it's trying to stay true to MNN and sort of our sort of mission statement of being, you know, made news network. Yeah, I was gonna ask, how are you guys balancing that now adding in uh... that extra work? How are we balancing that? How does it? <laughs> let me ask you this: how, how does it seem to to you guys? To me, it seems like it's running smoothly. Uh, you guys are still posting about bandmate, and you're sprinkling in some of the other bands and getting them recognition. I think it's uh, for the most part, it's like similar styles of music too. So I think it works pretty well, you know. And and like when I mean similar styles, like same, uh, like in the same vein, you know. Like same style of music, but not necessarily same genre, but the same feel, same vibe as Bandmate, which is really cool. So I think it's a really good place for people that do like Bandmate. They can hear these other bands. They are different than Bandmate, but they're still like organic, I guess, feeling, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Mm-hmm. They still have the rawness to them, uh, creativity. You know, you know what I mean, right? Like it's not as like you mentioned earlier, you don't like the polish polish over like really you know, kind of formulaic kind of style of music. So all the bands you're pre- um, like presenting are very interesting. They're very, they have something mm. unique about them, some character to it, which mm. I think is mm. really good. So I think it works okay. well. To me, it works well. And of course, there's going to be the some people that just band made, band made only. Um, right. To me, that concept's really weird. Uh, I mean, it's like the same with, you know, I'm a huge fan of baby metal. Like there's a lot of people that's only baby metal and that's it. And I, I don't get it. I like a bunch of different mm. music. So mm. to me, it's very, right. to me, I'm more open to it, but maybe to uh, some other hardcore fans, they're like band made and that's it. There's a lot yeah. of those people out there too. Mm. Well, no, I think it's good. I mean, something comes up with band made, you're, you're on it, you know, you're on it, you're there, whatever. But yeah. yeah, dude, to, to, if, but like, I think what Alan's kind of getting at is if that's all you talked about, you'd be searching for things, you know, right. like, oh, well, let's bring this up. Let's bring that up. I think the way you're doing it now, you're mm-hmm. what's relevant. You talk about it. You talk about it in depth with people mm-hmm. and then you bring in some other bands. I mean, hell yeah, dude. Man, yeah. Yeah. I, I think you know, and I mean, you know, and then earlier on, it really was just. You know, talking with SJ, like trying to stay true to to the channel, to to, to band me, but then again, trying to expose people to these bands. And you know, a lot of it is because I'm here in Japan. You know, I get yeah. to go to these shows. I'm seeing them. I'm like experiencing these things live. And when you see a band live, it affects you. You know, it's the, the same. The, these these are the avenues bandmate took to to do what they do you know True, they're in the same right. they're playing the same venues these bands are playing yeah. right yeah and so it was just me wanting because you know i did do a lot of marketing stuff for a band made unofficially i made a lot of stuff and really tried to push a lot of stuff and you know connect connect fans with the band and vice versa and you know over the years that kind of experience i felt like i could do that with these other bands you know, yeah. and, you know, maybe some will be a hit, some will be a miss, but at least I try to like get these bands out there. And um, so, you know, it's not like I'm trying to, because I know like with, I, I think um, with, with you guys and with some other channels is trying to like, th- here's this band, here's this band, how about this band? How about this music? How about this? How about this? And I don't have that capacity. Like that's just not in me. So it's just like, if I get if I get to go to a show or if I discover like a band that I'm like oh okay I I feel something like I connect with it on some personal level then I'll talk about them or then I'll try to do an interview with them and that I can do and I can do comfortably but I don't I, think I could ever get to a point where I'm just sort of like presenting like band after band you know yeah just like, here's this one and here's this one like it I think um. I'm just not good at that style. I res I resonate with that a lot. You had asked me in the message why I chose dim rays, 
and it's because I love the music, and that's why I wanted mm. to interview him. And I think it's really mm. important. Like, I wouldn't interview Hades. I'm not as big as a fan as, like, you guys are. Like, so mm. to me, there's no point to doing that. So I think the way you're going mm. about it is great. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, I think that's missed with some interview channels where they just interview all these bands, and I get it. But, like, when you come from a mm. non-fan perspective, I don't. I just don't mm. feel like they're as good. They're not as connecting, you know? Mm. Um, right. And... It was funny when you mentioned that, like, it's like, because I love the music. I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> like, I, mm. I want to talk to them, you know? Um, yeah. Where I think if you're just like aimlessly interviewing random bands, it's like, it doesn't have the same feeling or vibe. It just, it's not going to go as well, in my opinion. I mean, a lot of people go out there and interview who they want and just do it up. But to me, it doesn't feel as authentic. So that's what's really cool about your interviews. You could tell that you actually enjoy the music to the people you're talking to. And I think that matters. Hmm. Sure. Yeah. I just heard them raise on the live stream. Somebody requested them. It's pretty freaking cool, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <clears throat> Actually my interview with uh hero Tajima, um, the guy who does J rock tours. Um, he actually told me to interview them. This was like back in September. So I listened to their music. I was like, okay, this is pretty good. I guess at some point I'll get to them after I kind of get through like yeah. the season of all these different shows and stuff. Yeah. Um, Cause they're in, they're in Osaka. So then it was like, Oh, like right there, I could just, you know, take a train and meet them wherever. Mm -hmm. um, so then when you brought it up, I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that works. That works out. I, I was shocked. They messaged me after I posted a reaction video to them. They're like, Oh, Hey, I really mm. appreciate it. We jumped 300 subscribers since you guys posted nice. the video i was mm -hmm. like for one i was shocked i was like i don't know if that's mm. from us or not but mm. you know i was like make a I, note to put out my video soon <laughs> I, was like, I was like i was like hey if that inspired you to keep playing because i wasn't sure because it's been a while since they put out music but they are still playing there's they are still doing stuff oh, yeah, and i was right, like yeah i was like hell yeah like i hope that motivates you guys to hopefully do some music videos. And that's why I told him like, let's, let's set up some interview. Cause I really enjoy the band and I knew people on our channel enjoy it. Cause I'm a huge Hanabi fan. I love Bay metal. Mm. It's kind of like in the same vein. It's like all that music genre clashing. I really like. And I think that's what gravitated me towards Dim Rays. You know, I'm a big new metal fan. So like all those, anybody that has flashes of new metal and their stuff, I instantly love <laughs> nostalgic for me. So yeah. Uh, I, going back to what you said, though, I think that's really important. Uh, connecting when you're doing an interview is you should have, I think you should be listening to their music, <laughs> in my opinion, or something, you know. Uh, maybe no. not necessarily, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes the, well, one of the hardest things is I had to do my interview with the She Glapes. And then I did my interview with Whiskey Dust like four days later. Mm -hmm. And then, but it was kind of last minute, that interview, but it was pushed by Russ Henry from the Foxhole because mm -hmm. he he knows, and I think he's interacted with him before. So then he was like, do it. I'll connect you. Reach out. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> so it was, so it was like, I'll try to listen to the music. I'll try to think of certain or like specific songs that I can mention and bring up, like something about the production or the sound or, mm -hmm. or the lyrics even. Um, and then, you know, have questions ready as well. But then it was doing that and then finishing and then going straight to like, and then, okay, I need to listen, listen to Whiskey Dust again, listening to their stuff and then trying to think about the questions and how to do all this stuff. And yeah it's when things start to overlap it's just like oh shoot <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like wait wait so you know in my interview with the she glapes um because it was overlapping i was like oh i love it how you know the the guitar has there's a solo and then after that there's a keyboard solo and then you guys come in together where the key is harmonizing with the guitar mm -hmm. i was like oh i love this song and i threw out the name and then Afterwards, when I was editing, I went back. I was like, "Wait, is that the song?" Oh and no! Then I, and then I went. I went back, and then I played. I was like, "Oh shoot! I mentioned the wrong song." 
So I just cut that out. I was like, <laughs> forget it. I was like, I was like, forget it. <laughs> that oh man, that's happened before where you get the name wrong. Uh, yeah, that can be embarrassing. Uh, but yeah, it, it, just going back to what you're saying. So, all right, moving on. We got to talk about the big, the big one here. The thing that oh you yeah, just we've been saw. rambling along. Yeah, time. let's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. This is what I, I love these conversations. Like, I feel like I got to know you so much more than I did before mm. and appreciate you sharing all that information. You know, uh, it's cool to see like where you come from, how you're developing the channel and where it's come from. And it, it's inspiring too, just to see where you guys have started and you guys have made big waves and uh, waves in this past year. Oh, we lost Ryan. Oh. <laughs> I'm um, here. I, I'm, I'm here. I just need a minute. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Why did the, the camera camp for sure? <laughs> Why does the camera show up? <laughs> show, up <laughs> uh, show non video. There we go. All right, you're good, Ryan. <laughs> well, take your time. Um, there is actually, um, I don't know if you know, I, I kind of like put it out there, but it, it wasn't like it just you never know who knows what, what you've said like online. Mm -hmm. uh but you know i do plan on moving to tokyo yes i did hear uh, about that yep okay so that's sort of the big goal for next year is to be in the heart of everything that's happening try to establish um myself was that because that. of the music scene was is that why you decided on okay i'm gonna go to tokyo or is this something you're always planning or yeah, this... no, it, it, it was because of the music. Um, what was really interesting was when I went back home to the States uh, this past August. Yeah, it was August because that's when the bandmate show was. <laughs> and, yep. then, and then people were like, did you come just for bandmate, not for your family or friends? Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I came for everything, for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> It, it just it just worked out better where you know bandmate was playing so i could see bandmate <laughs> plus family and friends yeah two birds um, one stone <laughs> you know so last year last year when i visited home this was before eminence started and then this time i was sharing with family and people about this channel like, wow that's really cool and as i was talking about the channel i was telling them yeah i'm I'm pretty good at this. I'm pretty good at talking to people. I'm pretty good about sort of making this sort of content. Um, you know, I really love the idea of helping these smaller bands getting more exposure. Uh, you know, the fact that I can speak Japanese, I'm in a very unique position compared to a lot of other YouTubers who do talk about Japanese music because I can interact directly with them and build a relationship with them. And there's all these things that I can do and as I was talking about it, I was talking about it with a confidence that I don't remember having and a passion I don't remember having for other things for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And it just really made me want to make this a career if possible. And so I do want to go to Tokyo. I do want to kind of start to establish a system and then be able to monetize this and make a career out of it. because. I don't know. You're helping people. You're you're experiencing awesome music. Um, it's just I, there's just so many cool things you can be creative with it. Uh, there's just so many different things that I feel I have the tools for or the tools to make happen. So yeah, I, Tokyo is very much something that I want to use as sort of a, a springboard into much more of this. That's, that's awesome. I know guys, you guys just needs to retire once Peter gets up there and does all this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking? Not retire. <laughs> Higher. Higher. <laughs> I will charge you at a very decent rate. <laughs> There you go, guys. Make sure you uh, join our membership so we can pay for Peter uh, in future, in future yeah. videos. Check out our Patreon. <laughs> we need to pay for Peter. We're going to have a Peter 
we're gonna have a pay Peter tier. <laughs> Join us. We're doing this for Peter's sake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of that, guys, you I... can support Main News Network on their channel. They have a Patreon. Definitely. They they just started. Go support them if you love what he's doing over there. Which I know a lot of people on our channel appreciate what you're doing. So if you didn't know, he has a Patreon. You guys should check that out. Support his move to Tokyo. Yes, it's a uh, M N N Tokyo Plus, not Tokyo Drift. M N N Tokyo Plus. <laughs> M N Tokyo Plus. So bandmate. Yes. Just played Yokohama. There, Yokohama, and you were there. Yes, I let's, was there. Let's just. Uh, I know you've talked about it on your channel. Um, I'm interested in asking you some questions about that, but I just give us your overall summary for those who don't know of your experience going to that show. Oh, that's a broad question. Uh, can you <laughs> narrow it down a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like uh what aspects? So you arrived to the show. Um, are you meet mm. you're meeting with fans out there? I know you did some interviews, uh, out in the front, right? with those with some of the fans there pre show in the pre-show what what right. was that atmosphere like showing up to the place well when i first got there it was um when was this i think we got there about 10 30 between 10 30 and 11 uh people lining up in the merch line and that was cool because there weren't as many people it wasn't as hectic. Uh, I was able to talk with just, you know, a few people. And I was fortunate enough to talk to this guy, Kurt from Hawaii, whom I had met previously back in April at another bandmate show. And so we were talking about stuff and he's really just cool, very supportive. Um, a lot of encouraging words, um, even financially supportive, like right there on the spot. I was like, whoa. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so I appreciated that a lot. Um, yeah, it was it was that. I like that. <laughs> just a lot more subdued, just a lot more personal. Nothing where I have to like try to talk to 100 people. Um, and then I ended up making this thing as a memorabilia, a little souvenir um, for the Yokohama show. Mm. So sort of, an, sort of an oversized postcard with... Oh, yeah. uh, anniversary and stuff so i was trying to pass those out and just talking to people um that took longer than i thought but <laughs> you know grabbed lunch with people afterwards went back to the hotel and then kind of decompressed a little bit got ready and i was like okay here we go time to turn it on <laughs> mm -hmm. so after that, it was heading down, going out, you know, setting up the live stream, having my selfie stick ready. Uh, and then, yeah, just starting it, going in. And then by the time I got back and I was out there, it was it was pretty packed. And right when I arrived in the front of, of Yokohama Arena, it's like on Twitter, there's that massive, massive group shot, which I think you guys may yeah. have seen. Yep. Yeah. So so there's that massive, massive group shot. And I was already talking to a couple of fans who were on their way there. So as I was talking to them and getting like, you know, some some answers, um, I was like, oh, hey, everybody. And they're like, oh, Peter, Peter, come here, come here. I was like, oh, OK, hold on. So, you know, running <laughs> to the front uh, and then, you know, trying to take a photo. And that took a little while. So <laughs> my arm was like damn this selfie stick <laughs> and my weak arm <laughs> um but yeah you know it, it was it's it's a cool moment you know that many bandmate fans is that the biggest there was a previous one too maybe but i mean it was just cool anyway and then i got to meet uh numu who makes those awesome little sketches of bandmate on twitter he oh, hand yeah. he hand sketched like 200 the 200 and was passing them out Oh wow! Man. Um, let me see if I have it here. Uh, the stuff fans make and give out to other fans is—it seems like it's getting more and more intricate. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, man! Wow. This so so it, good. this is uh, Misa eating curry rice with her beer, and then a Connie <laughs> in the back. 
That's right. That's um, awesome. And again, just like just you know, tons of other stuff. I was getting like all these like stickers and little postcards and all this other all these other things. Um, but you know, here I am, like with my selfie stick. I'm talking to him. I talked to Michelle a little bit. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm sure the fans would love to like you know talk to her or like see her, you know, um, and, and hear what she has to say about the show tonight. Just trying to find people and. It's that balance of trying to interact with enough people um, and not overdo it and yeah. not underdo it. You want to be sufficient and like gifts enough to people. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a huge show. It's the biggest show they've had. So, right. um, but my brain was just like on the fritz. I was just like, ah, <laughs> <laughs> how many people from all over were there? Like coming in from, out of sight of Japan. You know, I, I I don't remember who I was talking to. I was like, it's got to be at least a thousand. They're like, oh, it's over a thousand people who came in. Wow, man. I was like, okay. So somewhere between a thousand to two thousand. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. Um, and then, oh, so I had to meet up with uh, Sala, uh, the, the, the lead singer of Hades. And, um, yeah, she actually drove down from Tokyo, and um, she wanted to give me some some merch uh, that um, she had promised to some fans that I knew. It's like okay, and I was like, oh, but you're gonna come here yourself? And like, I was like, okay, well, do you do you want to go to the Ben Beach show? And she's like, yeah, that'd be cool. Like, can I? I was like, yeah, let me let me ask and see if I can get you a ticket, and uh, you know had one for me and hers so i was like okay cool i was really curious about how she would enjoy it and because i knew that you know she is a musician she is a singer yeah i knew that she would like be taking it in and observing it and really just sort of like trying to see okay well bandmate is here at yokohama arena what did they do like what are they doing and I just thought it'd be really cool for her to experience that as well. So, mm. but yeah, uh, you know, ended up meeting up with her and then we were in line, got in line, went into the arena and yeah, so we were there. And then I mentioned previously, um, I ended up seeing like Love Bites there, which like was such a random, like, whoa, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's all because... Midori is so unique in how she looks yeah. compared to like compared to other like Japanese like women and artists. Yeah. Um, I saw like that very blonde hair, sort of that very tanned face. And I was like, wait, could it? Is wow. it? I was like, I was like, it's gotta be. It's gotta <laughs> be. You know? And then the two other girls, I was like, wait, I mm... I didn't see their faces, but I'm no, I'm pretty positive it would be two more like Love Bite members. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, "Hey, Sala, hold on a second. <laughs> I'll be right back." <laughs> yeah. And I just I just ran down because they're sort of like in the same proximity, same section, and they were closer up. So I just ran down the steps, and then I was like, "Ah, see what's it?" And then turned around. I was like, "Oh, it Midori Midori's hand. It's Love Bites this guy." It's like, "Oh." And then Asami turns her head around, and then Haruna oh, wow. also turns her head around. I was like, "Ah, oh, twenty two ah." And then I was like, "And then, but that was it. It was like I ran down. I was like, "Ah, see what I said? No fights, this guy." I was like, "Ah, I was like, ah, twenty two ah, bye." And then I just left. <laughs> That's crazy. Because I didn't uh, want to bother them. I didn't want yeah. to be like you know. I just Let's to, do like, an interview confirm. right like, now. Let's get <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Wow. So that was fun. That was a that was a nice little like plus, like just random like plus. <laughs> that is that is awesome. It, it, it's funny too. I was gonna um, ask you about the love bites if uh, about love bites thing if you saw them or met them or whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Um and again, it's weird, like. It just it's funny to me that I'm willing to sort of be stupid as be like, hey, 
are you okay just just checking <laughs> and then just and then just taking you off <laughs> yeah um but you know that was it nothing nothing else special no high fives no like ah <laughs> i'm a fan i like your stuff it, i but, feel uh, you that's what happened when i saw hanabie in uh i can't remember which state it was iowa i was like i don't want to ask him for a picture right now like it's a little weird because mm. they're sitting there on the side watching the other bands play and it's yeah. one of those moments of don't do it i was just like let me just talk to him and that's it and but they were like very like oh crap somebody noticed me kind of vibe so i was like okay uh. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave him alone you know what i mean uh, <laughs> i was just like oh just saying hi and i walked away because i think they were trying to be you know discreet and they're on the side uh watching other bands which is really cool they were supporting the bands that are opening for them and then they just yeah, uh because yeah. when they were done playing they ran away they were gone <laughs> okay <laughs> but fortunately i got to hang out with them at aftershock but that was a little different yeah. situation because they have a media tent where you don't have to worry mm. about outside um people like like bombarding them or whatnot so mm. right but makes sense. So I feel you on that. It's like one of those mm. like, uh, I don't know what to do. Should I ask for a picture or not? <laughs> you know, or I did that that we, last time I was in Japan and me and Tyler were going through uh, the Shibuya station and I saw this girl walk by with the guitar and I'm like, hey. I'm like, that's Haruka from Asterism. And she's like walking <laughs> through the station with her guitar that's sticking like two feet over her head. I'm mm. like, holy shit. She just was walking up buying tickets. I'm like, I mean, I feel like I should say something. <laughs> He's like, yeah. well, are you going to say anything? I'm like, what am I going to say? <laughs> yeah. So but I just said, you know, hi, you know, love your band. It's just really cool, you know, mm. you know, nice to see you or whatever. And just because I had, I had met him before, but she, she probably meets so many people. I was going to be like, I met you at this other show and, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's just like, I'm going to let you get about your business because you're obviously on your way somewhere would it be weird mm. to ask her for a picture like that it would be right peter that would be <laughs> pretty mm. random <laughs> i i don't have an experience in japan so i'm not sure i'm not sure try yeah, just try yeah. yeah i wonder if it's probably would have been upon more so there than over here you know yeah just politely you know like oh sumimasen no <laughs> you know like <laughs> yeah yeah that's one of those instances where any japanese i learned went right out the fucking window I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 sushi, sushi big dumb american i'm gonna walk <laughs> all right yeah so the show uh where were you at the show seated? Um, let's see. If if this is where the stage was at, mm -hmm. um, and this is where like the center is, people are sort of like down at like level on the floor. Yeah. yeah. And then here was the A section. Uh, I was right around here <clears throat> somewhere. So I got a decent. Got a decent view. I was, you know, I think I was close up enough. Uh, but I kind of went in thinking I love the really tight, just like crouch, like that crunch of just like the club, the mm -hmm. live, you know, house venue. I like that. Yeah. So when I went into yeah. Yokohama Arena, I was like, anywhere I am, I don't really care. I'm just going to like, observe the show rather than sort of like mm. totally participate in it yeah that's sort of my perspective um and i think it, it did me good so even during majority of the show i wasn't like losing my mind i wasn't like jumping up um i yeah i didn't like do what i usually do at a bandmate show i was sort of like taking it in and just observing it all and just like just watching just watching i was like man this is cool this is really cool and it was long dude <laughs> that's it a really long, long concert <laughs> yeah my feet were killing me and the seats actually flip up but you know how like sometimes uh like at a movie theater you just kind of sit when the seat is like sit like right on top of it yeah yeah, yeah. Just kinda, like, yeah. like 
So I was just doing that a lot. I was like, oh my gosh, I would take off my shoes, but it would stink up the place. So, um, but yeah, it, uh, it was an experience and I believe I mentioned this in, in the live stream I did afterwards, but there were quite a few times where I like, just really just wanted to cry. Um, it was like psyche right before daydreaming mm -hmm. where she's sharing like, thank you. It's because of you that we're here, you know, and this next song, like, um, you know, with our hearts, like fully like in it, like, you know, we, we're going to, we're going to present it to you yeah uh and then and then something i've never experienced you know at a bandmate show is konami doing that very sort of loose very loose intro to daydreaming like very u2 style the way that she was picking it if you had put a, mm -hmm. a delay on what she was doing like for that intro to daydreaming it was just like yep. dude this is this is like u2 the spotlight you know lights are sort of turned down and just kind of picking those chords and i was like oh this is beautiful it made the mood like it set such a crazy mood for me and i was like oh <laughs> daydreaming <laughs> so, into memorable and then into about us was torture <laughs> that's oh. yeah, like in a good way in a good way i was like wow you're really trying to bring to flood works <laughs> oh yeah they knew what they were doing <laughs> so with with Sana next to me, <laughs> yeah, it's dark. Thankfully, it's dark, and we're facing this way towards yeah. the stage. But I'm just like, <laughs> I'm not crying. <laughs> oh, like, just try I, not to ugly like, cry. Yeah, uh. Miku, Miku reading her letter to the to the girls while they're like up there. She's like down uh, on the stage. Um, and then really it was that last when they sang forward. Uh, yes. and it was sort of a, that new take on forward. Yeah, and then I don't think they showed it. They didn't show like everything like that was on the screen. But I, I think on the live stream, but, you know, they had that juxtaposition of like old photos, new photos. They did previously, too. But with Ford, it was just like watching the screen and wow, like it was if I if I talk enough about this and I think about it, like I could just ball right now. Yeah. It it was such a beautiful thing, like 10 years in the making. Who knows how many ups and downs they had. You know, yeah. we see a lot of the good and they posted a lot of that, but the struggles that they went through, especially in the beginning. Exactly. The fact that they worked so hard and went through all this together and got to this point. And um I I think more than anyone else, Psyche. Psyche is the one that triggers me emotionally. Mm -hmm. The way that she expresses in her face, the just the level of gratitude that I feel from her. The one she emotes, oh, yeah. it just, it's like, Psyche, stop looking at me. Like, turn around, <laughs> turn around, <laughs> look in that direction. <laughs> there's so um, many, there's so many moments like that, especially when they're reacting to themselves, like back in the day. Yeah. Like, yeah. All that. It was, it was powerful. Um, Was it the best bandmate show ever? Not to me. Because for me, it, it's again, it's the more intimate settings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But was it? But was it an amazing show? Yeah. Was it a memorable show? Yeah. Um, was it a moving show? Yes. Uh, was it a great like finale to their tenth annual tour? Yes, completely. Um, just you know, pulling pulling all the stops, doing the acoustic, psyche going out there doing the piano um you know just walking around doing that little circuit as they were yeah. singing um just a lot of the the interactions and just what they're willing to do and just trying to have fun with it and 
not overdoing it with like the lights and lasers and the screen. Like yeah. it wasn't too over the top. And I remember someone said, do you think there'll be like fireworks or like uh, there'll be flames? And I was like, pyro. No. Yeah. yeah, pyro, right. <laughs> Somebody mentioned that. I was like, no, there won't be. I was like, no. I almost I, I, felt like they thought they were still on a smaller stage because it took them so long. It, like, I think until the fifth song for them to actually start walking out. You know what I mean? I mean, like, it's like they're so used to being on those smaller stages and they're like, oh, wait, there's more room out here, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I wonder how much of it was planned and not planned, but it, se- it mm. seemed like it's like they get, they're they just so used to playing on just a stage, you know? And then finally they start walking out and stuff. I was like, I wonder, I wonder when they're going to, like, go around and stuff, you know? You have a whole arena, right? Um, yeah. It's way different. I wonder, like, from their perspective, like doing that, how different that actually was. Cause they are used to the more intimate settings, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I got the sense. I got the sense that they were sort of kids. They were kids in a 7,000 capacity <laughs> can- candy store yeah. <laughs> or like, or like in a 17,000 capacity playground. Yeah. I, I feel like, like they knew the fans were there and there was that, but at the same time, they were just having fun, like just, you know, yeah. on their stage and like, ah, hey, hey, yeah. <laughs> like it really, ha- there was a real sense of just like them being playful and just enjoying everything. Yeah. So, they really opened really up cool. after those first few songs. Um, I, I thought so. Like when I was watching the recording, I'm like, you could tell like the nerves were there, you know, but as soon as Unleash came on, it like, it was over. Like they were on it. I felt like it just like opened up from there. Mm. How did that, how did it feel for you in the beginning? Um, yeah, it's hard to remember, to be honest, like, um, like everything. Uh, but this year I had been to, is it eight bandmate shows? And because we had been doing m and and we had been doing, <clears throat> been doing the 10th anniversary tour updates the tattoos we had a pretty you know good sense of of the uh, the set list and and then i think the last couple of shows i was like came up with this thing called uh digapu so i was like oh so basically at the majority a lot of the shows they did d g a u p domination uh, glory. Uh, was it alone? No, D. Uh, it did domination, so glory, uh, alone, and then play. Oh, uh, alone, play, and then unleash. Right. Yep. Yeah. So those five songs, it was like oh, okay. So they're gonna do Digapu again. They're gonna play those five. So there was uh, sort of a like oh, okay, I see what's happening. They're, they're gonna kind of stay like in a pretty similar format, and I guess because of that. I even though I wanted like some like deeper cuts, I wanted them to go like a little bit more like oh da da yeah. you didn't see that one coming. <clears throat> for the most part, for the most part, they they stay true to the set list they I kept like throughout the whole year in Japan. Yeah. Um and so you know, if I'm honest, I was like, ah, I wish I wish I had heard warning. You know, uh, it would have been cool if they had done this song or that song. I Eric but, Eric really wanted a puzzle. He was like really thinking they're gonna do puzzle. You know why not? And yeah. of course, yeah. you know they they did thrill because you know that was the song that really kept them going. Um, so I really appreciated the fact that they did like the acoustic session. Um, mm-hmm. I think pe- people were expecting that they got it, but doing uh, what was it? Manners and different. Was it was it manners he did? They did do manners. They did different. Yeah. Okay, they did okay. different and manners. Right, right. So yeah, I I mean I really enjoyed that hearing it live compared to the Christmas acoustic, and I really love um what Psyche does with her vocals like on the chorus. Uh, totally different. Da, 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 da. Like when she kind of goes up, like mm-hmm. she hits the note, but like she there's a vibrato to it that like, Oh, it just, it just grabs me. There's just, there's just like this, Oh, it just like, just like pinches my heart. So I love hearing that live in, in like in that, in that place. Like it just, 
oh, that's just coming so cool. at you. Because yeah. I love Psyche over acoustic guitar. I actually prefer it. But like, I love the acoustic album. It's uh, yeah, one it, of my favorites. It's, yeah. Just something about and anatomy was really good. I just loved mm. how like the subtle voices mm. of Konami's harmonies were so yeah. good, and you can hear that. And I wish so much that I was there to see it live because I mm. feel like it would have sounded different. You know, like I, yeah. I was watching the concert, and I'm like, this is not the same as being there. Like I know it's not. Like I feel like I'm no, missing no. something. You know, I'm missing <clears> the <throat> crowd reaction because the crowd was so subdued. They kind of like on the compressors on the mic you can't really hear the crowd like singing back and i'm like but i know they're singing you know i know they're singing right. back because i've been to the concerts and one, one thing when you leave those bandmate concerts is you remember when you come in with your ahs and all that stuff as a crowd and like so when right. you're watching it back live i mean it's cool that we get to see it but i'm like damn i wish i was there because <laughs> i know i'm missing so much of this yeah no no you, you're right those those were the absolute highlights uh, the acoustic session, an anemone, any of the softer songs, I feel like stood out more to me mm -hmm. than you know, they're more sort of robust and like energetic songs, like yeah. Psyche's voice. Because I mean, the acoustics there, it wasn't like fantastic from where I was, but it yeah. was really good. But when you have just the guitar and just mm. Psyche's vocals. And just filling up the volume of that size, yeah, it feels it feels heavenly. It just <laughs> yeah. feels like you're it feels like you're being entirely just enveloped by like Psyche's vocals. Yeah, wow. and like damn, it's yeah, damn, man. it's warm. It's like damn, it's warm. <laughs> it's warm and cozy and sexy and sweet and like yeah, loving and just like pure like yeah so good that's so cool man i'm so happy for you they got to experience that it, yeah, it, that it, good, you that could tell song. it was like amazing um as far as the new songs how do you how do you feel that so we had brightest star miku came on mm -hmm. i have to listen to it again it definitely threw me back i wasn't expecting miku to be singing in a lower register so it was my first time mm. hearing this uh, she's done it before with older songs of course but it's right. been a while you know um how what do you think about that song brightest star i like it i think sayonaki dori is a better song same same um i was really I first hoping heard for it, that <laughs> i mean when i first heard it i thought oh it's very klupo-esque it's more klupo than it is like kobato miku mm. like just the, the feel of it mm -hmm. um so i enjoyed it i heard it i think i ended up hearing it ultimately a total of four or five times live this year mm, okay. um and i liked it i was like oh it's it's cute and it's fun it's bright uh you know bright a star but it didn't have mm, i think melodically chord wise it just it just wasn't quite again it's it's a good song but yeah. it's not like, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, Konami is kind of doing like a lot of like shredding too during, <laughs> during that song too. Like a lot of tapping on the yeah. guitar for certain lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I got to yeah. listen to it again because I haven't really listened. I went the one time through it. I haven't revisited the concert yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, just personally, it's not as memorable. But again, I think it's a good song. It's a good solid song. Yeah. That's how I, that's how I felt about both these new ones, but I did go back and listen to the other new one. I'm not sure what it's called. I see Magi, people. Magi. Magi. Okay. Oh, the one they played at Yokohama. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Those, those yeah. are only two I've heard. I know they've played some other ones. Um, but yeah. Oh, by the way, the, with brightest star, actually there's one memorable moment for me was the dueling guitar solo that came out of nowhere. Yeah. I remember I was oh, one day they were like, <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Doing like the octaves and stuff together. Right. Yeah. Peter, I was That's literally fun. writing my notes down. Cause like I was writing notes for every song. Cause I want to talk about this on Gaijin guys. And I was like, all right, I'm writing down about brightest star. And all of a sudden I hear, Boo! I'm like, what, what the happened? <laughs> like, <laughs> rewind it. Like they just, they just harmonize out of nowhere. <laughs> right. I thought right. That, that part was cool. Uh, yeah, but yeah. I, I agree with you on that song too. I'm I'm kind of the same way about it. Um, yeah, no, 
and that was a really cool thing is that that's the first like real to me it felt like that's the first real legitimate like dual guitar solo that bandmate has had <laughs> yeah you know yeah. It, yeah. it's simple that's... it's simple but it is a solo so. yeah that's the first oh, one that's... i mean now that we've seen that like what is there to come because you remember we were talking about them like upgrading right so if miku's mm. starting to do that already i wonder what else they have <clears throat> planned like or what konami has planned maybe for miku like what is she mm. what is she teaching her on the side because most mm. likely konami was like hey i want you to play this little lead thing and they did that so i wonder like where that's gonna go in newer songs are they gonna develop that more are they gonna add some right. more stuff like that in newer songs would you be excited for that well i'm Let's really curious here. about miku's sense of feel when mm. it comes to soloing like i i don't know how she sounds when she's bending a string her vibrato like what sort of personality and like oomph she'll put into like her fingers because that difference between doing rhythm and even doing like octave solos versus actually like single notes yeah. and like bending and putting technique into it because i mean that's the difference between like a good guitarist to a great guitarist yep. play the same exact thing the exact same lead but the feel <laughs> that you put into those fingertips so i'm curious does Miku have that feel? Does she have that feel ability in mm. in in lead? So I I don't know. Um, because if it doesn't sound great, then you know you should wait. You should wait. To yeah. be honest, for like I'd rather have a great solo from Miku later than yeah. like a decent. Well, yeah. Mm, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to add to that. I don't, <clears throat> yeah. If she's doing the harmonies, though, like more harmonies like that, I think it works mm. because you're mm. always going to have Konami louder, right? Because you know how mm. when it's kind of like backup vocalist, you know, the there's that guy that's really good at vocals, but he's not quite the lead vocalist. So he's mm. always doing the backing ones. So still mm. like works nicely. But I get what you're saying. Like, because if you have a, a tremendous backup singer, it can make a difference also, right? You have the thing. Mm. So I get what you're saying. So like right now it's like that difference of like how good but is yeah, it so, as a backup, you know? But I'm not I'm not uh I think in the group or in that party that's like, oh my god, I want to hear Miku do a solo. I'm not mm. that hungry for that. Oh yeah, well, I don't think either. I don't think Miku is a guitar player that sits around and just like noodles around and shreds. I think she she plays guitar mm -hmm. in the band, she plays rhythm, and I don't but I don't think she's like, oh let me fucking right would shed yeah. this shit so I, that's why the solo we saw was was a pretty rhythmic solo but it sounded really fucking cool it sounded cool yeah, yeah. so yeah i i think she's i mean she's busy as hell but she's she's a yeah a great fucking rhythm guitarist and i don't think she's worried about playing leads honestly yeah, yeah. i was just curious so, like yeah. hearing that be cool. i was like i wonder what they're gonna do in newer albums because i yeah. mean where else do you go like they've like They've gone crazy already, and I feel like the next step would be like involving Miku in harmonies more often, lead harmonies. I think that would be a pretty decent progression, you know. Like I could see that happening. Maybe not her doing full on solo, but maybe yeah. a lot more of like, oh, let's harmonize these chords a little better, or like, mm -hmm. while you play this chord, I play this chord, and like, there's more variations starting to happen, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. more complex structures or whatnot that'd be cool i wonder yeah i mean we'll just have to wait and see <laughs> wait. um but yeah i mean this year alone as far as new songs that they put out there was memorable there was shambles brightest star go easy and magi those are our five songs right there and yeah. if go easy if i haven't heard yet yeah i heard it once finally i was like like god when am i going to hear this I went through like three shows after they had played it. They had first played it. And I was like, oh, nope. Oh, nope. Oh, <laughs> nope. I was like, good. I just want to hear it once. <laughs> once. That's and crazy then I that they did that. It. And then, yeah, yeah. then I finally got it. To, I got to hear it once. I I can't remember how it sounded, but. Um, <laughs> oh, I was yeah. wondering, like, well, but, how did it sound, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, so those. Those five songs, I'm pretty sure, will be on their new album. Like, yeah. Uh, yeah. let's see. So, oh, 
Bubble and Glory both were on put on Conqueror. And then so was Endless Story for Conqueror before like Conqueror came out as like singles. Yeah. Um, but Smile wasn't the B side Smile and then Hide and Seek weren't. So but I'm I'm assuming that those five songs will be on on the new album, which means that there's at least seven new songs that we haven't heard. Yeah. Now, with Moggy, what do you, do you remember that one of how it sounded and how you felt about that song? Hmm. Everybody, jump, jump, jump. The dance, uh, yeah. Da, 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 dance, dance. Da, da, da. I was impartial when I first heard it, for sure. I listened to it a second time, mm. and the second listen, I really appreciate Konami's crazy shredding on it. I'm still mm. like, I liked it way more this morning when I heard it again because. It put mm. me off when I first heard it. I'm like, huh? I, I don't know why, <laughs> but maybe that happens with me with every... Sometimes it happens to me with bandmate songs. It was like kind of influencer did that to me. I was like, wait a second. I had to listen to it again. And I'm like, oh, okay. I appreciate it way more afterwards, you know, and actually enjoyed it mm. a lot. With Moggy, though, I, I it was interesting because I, I don't know how I felt about it. I still have to listen to it again. I'm just curious your thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, I I think I'll have to sit down and listen to it again too. To be honest, yeah. I've heard it. I heard it first at Osaka, yeah, and then and then at Yokohama. So <clears throat> it's too new. Like the chorus, yeah, the chorus, <laughs> the chorus I can remember, but I I can't quite recall the rest of it at this point. Mm. I thought it was. <clears throat> I think I thought I was like, oh, it's okay, but. It didn't like grab me. Yeah. Yeah. It's really... Yeah. But you know, neither did um Wonderland when I first heard it. The mm. first time I heard it, it was at the same venue, Osaka Namba Hatch. And I was like, uh, it's I don't think it's great. Yeah. And I was like, uh I don't think Psyche's really hitting qu- the notes quite at pitch. <clears throat> But now I love that song. So yeah, it's new, right? Uh, it just gets better and better. It's kind of like memorable. I feel like memorable just keeps getting better every time I hear. Well, it. Well, for me, I yeah. for me, I love memorable because I knew it was written like specifically about us. Yeah, you know, it's like it. It really is like your lover writing a song for you personally. I was like, oh mm. shit, that's that's uh you know, I'll I'll take it. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I I'm not um objective when it comes to that song. Like, do I think it's their best song? No, but do I love it? Yeah. <laughs> but I it's, agree it's with my... you. When that song came out, I liked that right out the gate. Memorable. Mm. That that one was like on first listen. You know, it was one of those one of those songs for me that I enjoyed. But it could be because of what you said. <clears throat> yeah. And then. When I saw the uh, U.S. tour uh, documentary, and did you guys get to see that? Yeah, man. The 2022 yeah, man. U.S. tour documentary. Seeing Konami. Write it. Present that song. Oh, and then I just I just started crying. I was like, ah. Uh. Well, like, when oh, she was man. like humming, humming the vocal melody, I'm like, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That was that was really sweet. I have so, not seen the documentary yet. Oh, oh, I would definitely encourage you to. That's awesome. So they They're, they talk about in that documentary how they went about writing that song, or she presents. They it didn't talk them. about it. They didn't it talk was, about it. They recorded, they recorded Konami strumming like I mm. think it was for electric, without yeah. it being plugged in, just humming. Like on the tour bus. Yeah, mm. she's just going playing through the chords it. and going through the mel- the vocal melody. And she's like, Psyche, Psyche. And then she's she like hums it for her. And then Psyche's like, E John, like, isn't that good? Yeah. And oh, I was like, so oh cool. man, that's that's awesome. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I gotta watch that. I mean, where where could I watch that actually? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody DVD, around right? you probably yeah. I'm sure if you're like Hey, does anybody have a US documentary? <laughs> yeah, dude. They can send to me. <laughs> Put the word out, buddy. You'll you'll get it. Uh, Somehow. Yeah. But that was really, really cool. That was a cool moment. And then 
I mean, we're kind of going off topic, but throughout that documentary, you'd see moments and pockets of Konami going backstage, just being exhausted. Yeah. Just like, New just like show. oh man, I can't do this. There's this one moment she goes down, she puts her head on the table. Akane comes over. She like puts like a, comp- a, a compress Towers on her. Like, towel, towel, yeah. I was like, oh. Well, Alan, you remember on. the New Jersey show? Like they had their... As like an MC, and they're yeah. like, "Oh, where's Konami? Konami where's Konami? Sleeping? Right? Yeah. She went backstage and put her head down on the table and was like exhausted, dude. And Akane was back there trying to just make her yep. feel better. Yeah. And I when that came that. up on the video, I'm like, "Oh my god, man!" That she then came out, you know, and finished the She's show. Like, yeah, she and did. Then, yeah, that last show at Chicago, uh, and then coming outside, hugging each other, crying their eyes out, like we did it, we did it, <laughs> yeah. did and. Uh, I think their second stuff. run, I think they learned a lot from that first run. And then I think their second time back, they had it more under control, right? With like making sure they got their rest and everything. Yeah. 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 I think so. Cause that was a, that's a heavy run, that first one. That was insane. That was a lot of shows in a row. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Just as like being a fan and going to those shows, like we went to all those, right? Even like Ryan and I were like exhausted just going and watching. So I can't imagine. Yeah, man. <laughs> I can't imagine them, you know, you're playing, exerting doing energy, the, doing the same amount of travel <laughs> yeah. and then putting on a goddamn show on, <laughs> on top of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. It was so I can't imagine, you know. Uh, what kind of toll that takes? I mean, I know what kind of toll it takes. I just went on tour. It's it's a lot of mental, you know, it's a lot of mental hurdles also on top of it. You know, you're not getting the best sleep. You're not at home. Uh, you're sleeping in random cities that you're not aware of. You're not familiar with surroundings, so your brain is just like on overdrive. Like th- your defenses yeah. are up constantly. You know, especially if you're in a whole different country that you're not used to. At least when I did my three week tour, I'm in the country i know <laughs> but yeah. right yeah so it's way different when you're like traveling abroad yeah sure anything else you want to mention about the the concert um <clears throat> is there anything else about this concert um I mean, I'm just glad I was there. I'm grateful I had the opportunity to be there. Uh, um, and I guess this is going back to, you know, having MNN as a channel. And I know you guys have experienced this as well. But on YouTube, in the world, in the cyber world, on the internet, of course, there are people who are very unkind, very critical. Mm -hmm. um ready to abuse you like out the gate with anything that you say and ready to like attack but within that there are so many bright spots and some of the most beautiful generous kindest people you'll ever meet in your life and you don't understand why people are this good to you and it doesn't make sense you're like why are you doing this why are you offering this and um So, you know, this year has been really, really interesting. But one of the brightest spots for me is meeting such good people. (laughs) And, you know, like on Twitter X now, I've had to block so many different accounts just because just like all these random, like, you know, accounts like coming in and people have just just so much hate people hate so hard they're so like they're just so ready to just just shit on you and like stab you and like like just cut you down and um i feel that yeah so i'm just really really glad that mnn has been um like a bridge you know, uh, really sort of uh, a gateway to a lot of goodness, a lot of kindness, a lot of um, discovery in terms of like just good, good people. Uh, And 
I'm sure if we got into deeper conversations, we would disagree on like whatever number of points. But up to this point right now, like I'm just really glad. I love meeting people when they're good people. And so I'm really grateful for the good people that I've met who have been in my life just from this year and just Eminem giving me that opportunity. Like there's a level <clears throat> of that opportunity I probably would have had attending so many band meet shows and meeting fans and interacting sort of just, you know, naturally. But because of M&N and because of me being sort of forced to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of like interacting with people and then also people finding out about me because of m and and just being grateful for the work that we're doing. Um, I've just encountered so much kindness and that really means a lot to me. Hell yeah. Um, Cause I know even for me personally, I'm not the nicest guy. I'm really not. Uh, I complain like such an old crab. Like <laughs> I can be so critical of so many things. And I, I am a lot of times. Um, so to have that kindness, it like, it softens my heart and it, it, I feel like it helps me to stay human. So like this year has done that for me, like encountering the fans and that their kindness and then even interacting with these Japanese fans or Japanese bands and just really just experiencing how awesome they are, not just as performers, but as people. Like I I still, I'm just thinking about me interacting and just being as close as I am with Hades right now. And like, God, that's so nuts. When do you ever like become blown away by a band and you see that band and then like, before you know it, they're like contacting you and talking with you and like chatting. We're like eating rice together and laughing. And I'm like, how did this happen? <laughs> what, yeah. what, what the heck just happened? Um, Put yourself out there, man. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, even, even just you guys, like being able to talk with you guys about this kind of stuff, about stuff that we love that we have in common. And then, you know, not being judgmental about each other and just really kind of just supporting each other. It's like an awesome, awesome thing that I really just don't take for granted. Um, I'm super, super grateful for people like you uh, and like other people like, like you guys out there, like it means a lot. So um, yeah, MNN is pretty cool. It's done, done a lot of good stuff for me. So I'm happy. Hell yeah, man. Well, same back at you. For it, sure, dude. It's definitely uh it's neat to be able to go to Japan and meet up with him and have like somebody there who I know and we could it's it's just a cool thing all around. I'll be here as long as Japan will let me stay. <laughs> <laughs> well, on that note, guys, um I think we'll end it there. Appreciate everybody listening. Is there any last words you want to say other than that, Peter? Or um no, I mean, I, I think I kind of just shared my gratitude for everybody out there. Yeah. Um, and maybe the only last thing I'll say is, you know, give give more music a chance, give more bands a chance. Um, and kind of like how we were talking about, oh, that the first time I heard this song, it didn't quite grab me. I feel like, you know, try to give these bands like a more assertive opportunity in your life. Mm -hmm. give it a couple of listens maybe don't just check out a single listen to like the whole al album because mm -hmm. that makes a difference you may have heard that one song that doesn't quite get you but there's like a whole like other set that really does and <clears throat> you know being yeah, willing sure. to try out all that different stuff it because god damn music can change your life yeah 100 <laughs> percent so all yeah. right guys make sure you subscribe to made news network they do excellent content as you guys heard here today they're interviewing some more japanese bands out there so great job with that peter and Thank looking forward much. to the new content man thanks again for coming on uh no reason anytime all right see you guys later see you